Hello, everyone. It's uh, nice to be here. Um, I don't often get out. Um, I run a, uh, the RabbitMQ team uh, for Erlang Solutions. Um, we're a, a, a consultancy um, that supports mainly products within the Erlang and Elixir community. Um, and I'm going to talk about um, how to grow and maintain open source uh, community and ecosystem for the long term. Uh, but I have a bit of a confession to make. Uh, the chap who was actually going to do this talk, um, uh, a chap called Francesco Cesarini, uh, has about 30 years of experience of working within the open source uh, community. Unfortunately, he couldn't be here uh, today. Um, but he's a real expert. He's written books uh, on, on, on the subject. Uh, he's got up on stage. And he's part of that O'Reilly community. Um, and he has a great re uh, reputation within that open source community. Um, what's interesting to see is his passion and commitment to the community. And that comes through in those um, projects where you've got a real ambassador for, for, for the community. Uh, so if I'm honest, I feel a little bit of a fraud standing up here um, because I don't necessarily have that experience. But one of the, th one of the things that I, um, uh, I thought I'd bring to this particular uh, uh, talk was how practically uh, working within an, uh, an open source community uh, really is for, for a company who's still quite a small company in the size of things and how we um, uh, work with uh, companies uh, accordingly. So there's only two things that I've done in, in the long term. Uh, that gave me, one of those things gave me uh, a bit of hope and optimism and the other was a little bit of fear. Um, one was getting married and the other one was uh, signing the mortgage papers uh, just before the subprime crash, uh, which was uh, an application for 25 years at the time. Um, so those are sort of long term. So when we talk about long term, what do we actually mean by that? Um, and I think one of those things is about the commitment that you're prepared to make within those uh, communities. Um, the most the most that you can get from an open source community is showing that element of passion and commitment uh, to try and sustain you through that journey. Um, we use words like uh, community to wrap our heads around these ephemeral groups of people. Um, but they are built on shared experiences and at Learning Solutions, our involvement with RabbitMQ and this open source uh, community came about in a, a roundabout way. It did. Um, relationships uh, evolve. Um, our association with uh, RabbitMQ uh, was with the very early days of this open source project. Uh, we contributed our knowledge and insights uh, from a particular perspective, and that's the use of Erlang within, that, within the RabbitMQ project. Prior to the uh, launch of RabbitMQ, uh, we provided some specialist consulting uh, around Erlang, um, and that was for the company then known as uh, RabbitMQ Technologies. Uh, for those of you who don't know anything about Erlang, uh, Erlang is a programming language that was open sourced by Ericsson in the 1990s. It solved a particular problem um, uh, around the reliability of telecom networks uh, at, a, at a scalable size. Uh, so we've gained reputation for being experts in this particular area. Um, and this is a very niche area for us. Uh, so our first contact really was with doing this consultancy with RabbitMQ Technologies, which was back in uh, 2007. Um, if 
fast forward seven years and um, we'd had a brand new opportunity to work with RabbitMQ again, but this time with VMware. Uh, VMware were, th at this point, RabbitMQ was a very popular uh, worldwide success as a messaging broker. Um, but VMware um, um, needed additional support around that particular open source product. And where we contributed at that particular point in time was the, the skills around Erlang. And this involved, uh, this allowed us to get to build knowledge around uh, RabbitMQ, but not only for VMware at that time, was to supplement their own contributions to that project, to keep the momentum going in that particular uh, industry. Um, but again, our relationship um, changed as we became much more involved with RabbitMQ. While this was a sideline project for us, um, we began to build up a deeper knowledge about RabbitMQ and ar around the usage of that particular product. And we needed to un answer certain questions uh, from the community. Um, and this was quite difficult for us to do because we're still a small company. Um, uh, but those questions were still coming around. So I think what's important about um, working with an open source product is you don't really quite know what your relationship with that open source community is going to be like. Um, it's what it, and we didn't necessarily have an agenda uh, when working with RabbitMQ. So when you're working with an open source uh, product, um, it, can t it can be a bit of a winding path. At different times, your contributions to that community are different and uh, evolve around how the community is using that particular product. So that's, I think, a quite important thing for companies to understand when they get involved with a, an open source product. So commercially, it's been good for us. Um, we provide consultancy. Um, we take, um, it's both exciting and interesting for the engineers who are invested in RabbitMQ. Uh, less so for, for the corporate business uh, who are looking to figure out what, you know, uh, what the business model is about uh, what we're doing. So by that point, we'd been working with RabbitMQ for 15 years um, over the course of a, um, a, a over the course of that development and evolution of that particular product um, however we're a small business and what we noticed in the community was there wasn't actually an open source uh, there wasn't actually a conference around RabbitMQ um, and there wasn't a uh, an opportunity for uh, uh, companies to rally around the use of their own particular product uh, usage of RabbitMQ. So we thought, okay, well, what, what can we do about that? We can perhaps um, uh, take what we've learned within the Erlang community and actually jumpstart the community within Rabbit. So we, about five years ago, we uh, set up the uh, RabbitMQ Summit which was an opportunity for companies to, and individuals to learn and support and share. And, and that's really what, um, when you're working alongside an open source uh, project, creating opportunities for uh, those who want to teach, uh, those who want to learn, those who want to share, and those who want to serve. And you get loads of different types of organizations and people's different needs uh, around a particular pro uh, project. We didn't do this alone. We worked with other companies who use RabbitMQ as part of their technology strategy. Um, it's, not an in, it's, it's not an individual project as such. Um, it's a contributions of several different companies uh, who have an interest in RabbitMQ.
So in this slide, we want to talk about um, uh, running with the open source uh, ethos. It's an ac actual acknowledgement that no single organization can truly cater for all future needs. So the ability to hand over the baton to other companies to take responsibility for their own contributions to the um, community is really a, a quite a different mindset. So when we are talking with other uh, companies around the community, our purpose really is to try and engage those companies who are making use of the uh, RabbitMQ so that uh, there is a greater base to support from. It's a willingness to share and a willingness to trust. Frankly, it costs a lot of money to run these types of events. You need a marketing team, a conference team, uh, commercial sponsors, uh, and if you're lucky, you might even break even. Um, so, but a community, if it's to thrive, needs its focal point. And working with those different companies uh, allows us to uh, share that burden as a small company ourselves. Why do we encourage companies to uh, run with uh, open source projects? Many companies are not suited to, uh, to the open source uh, philosophy because the commercial culture isn't predicated on learning, sharing, and trusting outside of the organization. Often we work with companies who seek our consultancy uh, but don't want necessarily want to share the improvements within the community. Uh, sometimes that's unintentional. Um, we are often in the situation where uh, corporate lawyers have uh, got involved uh, and lack the open source culture themselves um, and use IP wording to squirrel away code in the hope that um, they are protecting the jewels of the business. But tools don't make the business. And let me repeat that. The tools of the business don't make the business. If you don't share, you don't trust, uh, there is a fundamental misunderstanding of open source. You are laboring the organization to maintain that code and that hardly ever happens. Not sharing improvements with the community creates a fork in the community. And effectively, if the organization isn't sharing those contributions, it's facing against the community. So it's important to acknowledge sharing code with the community, getting accepted into the core catalyzes and preserves the investment for the company but within the community. The network effect of supported code from within the community is an accelerant for the commercial success if they're willing to contribute. So growing and maintaining together is how we realize the benefit of open source. And the value of open source is not in the code itself but in the sharing of codified ideas. So one of the things that all organizations are facing is volatility. Um, communities can respond in many ways to a perceived threat. We've seen the effects of a pandemic on whole industries, funding models that collapse, and too many copycat entrants within a crowded uh, marketplace. Incremental improvements at a community level have, have a compound effect. Communities can adapt quicker because the threat are shared threats. Motivations are at a group level and not at an organizational level, commercial level. 
and the diversity of survival compounds the returns back to the community. So individual companies that are facing issues um, within the software that they need, they will innovate those pieces of software. And that goes back to the community. In the case of RabbitMQ, there are three sources of innovation uh, that occur within this particular project. The first is with the project itself, and that's largely supported by VMware. The second source um, is the wider community who extend the functionality of RabbitMQ by developing custom plugins. This effectively extends the ecosystem um, for, for different companies, and you can pick and choose the features that you need from from um, this particular open source project. The third is uh, the technology that uh, RabbitMQ is built on. So earlier on, I mentioned that um, um, uh, Rabbit is built on Erlang, which is another open source uh, project, uh, which is largely supported by Ericsson, who are very big in the telecommunications uh, sector. And their contributions to to that particular uh, project meant that um, RabbitMQ got a 130% performance uh, improvement just last year, just by them updating that particular project. So it reduces the cost of in innovation. When you carefully look at open source uh, projects, those companies that are actually contributing it have a compound effect uh, of innovation. So we encourage companies, and mainly these are non-software companies that are using uh, RabbitMQ, to understand really this is where the, the benefits, the commercial benefits of working with open source software are, even if you're contributing to that success. It embraces the enhances the uh, resilience of a particular project through the uh, contributions uh, of uh, different companies. And there's a network effect of the usage that accelerates the refinement in the technologies needed to support it. And what I mean by that is uh, companies uh, like Ericsson, like VMware, when they collaborate together on separate projects, but are combined within products like RabbitMQ, there is that compound effect um, that uh, organizations benefit from. So there are companies that understand how that network effect of uh, open source work. So we've had the pleasure of working with some of these companies that are using RabbitMQ, and they realize culturally at the, at the deepest level why um, open source uh, matters. So I've talked about uh, the community. We are running a, an, open, a, an open source uh, um, summit in September for RabbitMQ. Um, and it's a really, an, again, an opportunity for companies who are using open source product, products to collaborate, see what other companies, commercial companies, are doing with the product and share uh, ideas and work together. And it's only through those sorts of opportunities that um, uh, open source projects survive. So thank you very much. Does anyone have any questions? business side uh, to sell them the, the opportunity to participate in, uh, and to invest in, uh, in an open source product. Uh, what are the challenges that you have faced and uh, what are the tips that you can give to Okay. Us? So uh, there are companies that um, are really engaged in contributing to open source projects. Um, that's a given. One of the challenges uh, that we face is while we do the implementation on behalf of those companies, it's not always accepted by the uh, maintainer of the project. However, you can get around this. By choosing the right type of uh, 
uh, open source project, you can contribute not necessarily to the core part of the product, but you can contribute to the extended uh, plug-in features of the community. So that's, um, that's how we get around sometimes the difficulties that when companies want to get um, a core contribution into, into an open source project, whether that happens or not, you can get around that. Um, the other difficulty, I think, within open source projects and where we support companies is maintaining that on behalf of those companies. So even if you have a, a, a potential fork within um, uh, the open source community and it isn't, cont it isn't um, um, uh, incorporated within the core, you can still maintain those. Uh, well, we still help companies maintain those as parallel features along there. And it's open source within, within other uh, companies who choose to want to take that on. So that's how we do that. So you talked about how um, open source encourages uh, collaboration amongst the group rather than just a single entity or business or corporation. Can you give me um, an insight on how you guys get plugged into, uh, let's say, a vulnerability found amongst the group? Um, so they, it's usually through inquiries, separate inquiries. So um, uh, uh, companies who use open source uh, projects uh, probably go through some of the key members uh, um, of an open source project. Sometimes they are companies, and they may not get joy because actually it's not the main strategic uh, focus. Um, we also have um, issues where companies uh, are using a legacy version of an open source project. Uh, and it's not their fault. They've used a particular product, they've rolled it out to their communities, and it's very difficult for their communities to take on those particular upgrades. So they are looking for ways in which uh, that can be supported. Now, uh, open source isn't perfect, um, but unless you have uh, companies that are contributing to the, the whole nature of open source, not one particular vision, um, it's very difficult for organizations to um, in, invest. That's why it's really important when we talk about um, engaging companies um, who aren't necessarily software companies. They are you know, probably in the non-technical space. Um, not to squirrel away the, the code, because that's where code goes to die, effectively. Um, so uh, we, we give them these examples. We invite them to the community. They speak to other companies who are contributing so that they understand, actually, this is a cultural change that occurs. And one of the important things about that cultural change is the sustainability of software. Once you're in a community, that becomes much more sustainable um, because you've got a wider usage of the product um, going forward. Does it matter? Um, for me, it doesn't matter. The reason why it doesn't matter is uh, this is just tooling. Real businesses are, are not really dependent on individual tools themselves. They're innovating at a, at a, at a wider level. So contributing back, even if you, your business model is to take uh, uh, an open source product and host it, for example, as many uh, cloud companies do. Um, that doesn't matter because they're not, they're only, in, they're only innovating at the lowest commodity level. 
they're not innovating at the level that some of the bigger corporates are, are pushing that technology. So within a community, you have different players who are pushing um, the technology at a, an extreme level that the contrib they need those contributions to go um, into the community. Now, not all of the community is going to benefit from that because their market share in their particular uh, uh, area of business um, isn't, uh, isn't push pushing that technology that way. So the community benefits um, through the, bigger, the biggest companies who are pushing that technology. Now, even the cloud companies uh, come back and say, hmm, you know, this open source technology isn't scaling to what we need. What can we do? What can you do to fix that? And uh, that's, that's the benefit to the community. And, and uh, when that goes back to the open source uh, community, even if as an individual business you're not pushing that technology uh, to, to its limits, uh, you have that opportunity to trust that technology when you do get to that level. Okay? Okay. Sorry? What does good look like? Um, um, good looks like um, the ability to um, meet new channel, meet new um, channels of opportunity. So, whatever the direction of a particular open source product, whatever the threat um, that I was talking about, is is the way that the community adapts. Uh, accordingly. So with RabbitMQ, um, uh, its, its benefit is its adaptability. And the ability to connect uh, Java clients or uh, PHP clients or Ruby clients or the next flavor of language uh, that becomes the, the new fashion, um, that plugin uh, architecture allows um, those organizations who have made a significant investment in the technology to adapt accordingly. So, you know, we're in that road you evolve and your relationship with the software changes. Um, but it is always in a response to how the market is, is changing. You know, 10 years ago, cloud technology wasn't such a big thing. Uh, today it is a fundamental strategy for many companies. So it's choosing the plugins uh, infrastructure that gives you that adip, uh, adaptability um, is key. And, and this is something that uh, perhaps with RabbitMQ, we explain that more uh, in more depth uh, with companies who are sort of making that particular choice. And contributing now uh, actually sets the direction of where the product is, is, is going, invariably. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs>